Right. It's my pleasure to welcome my friend Allison Enega to share with us today. Allison and her husband Andy live here in Prescott. Allison is the mother of five, Brom, who's 14, Auburn, 13, Emily, 9, Ellery, who would be 6, and Briar, who's with us today, is 3. Allison is a stay-at-home mom, first and foremost, and she has been spreading the word of Norwex for the last 11 years. I'm proud to say that she's my upline leader and friend within Norwex as well. In 2015, their family's life was flipped upside down when their two-year-old daughter, Ellery, drowned. Since then, Allison's perspective on life has changed drastically. Her mission in life is to spread joy, kindness, and love in Ellery's name. She started a pay-it-forward campaign called Ellery's A Joyful Gift. Um, and they share uh, random acts of kindness in memory of Ellery. In 2018, Allison got together with a few other parents in our community that lost their children way too young as well. Ava Christensen, who passed away from cancer, and Tyler Orpen, who was killed in an auto accident, to create a way to carry on their children's legacies. We decided, or Allison and the parents, decided to create an inclusive playground called Fairy Wonderland. They established a 501c3 nonprofit called Healing Play Incorporated in October of 2018 to support this project. I know Allison has other exciting news to share as well, so please take it away. Welcome. Well, so now you know a little bit about me. Um, tragedy does a, a lot to somebody, you know? And it's a different perspective that you have on life and what it's about. So um, I know there's a lot of stuff and fear going on with this coronavirus and stuff like that. But you guys, everyone's got to live their lives. That's my two cents for today because you just don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Okay? So we started this, this project. Um, I, well, this is my, I'll pass these around if you want to pass them around. This is my um, pay it forward um, I just I started this because it's like when your child dies, you're like, you got to do something, you know, because no one's going to know her from here on out. So I started a, a, a pay it forward. So when you do something nice, you hand that out to people and um, hopefully they do a kind act and, and the card keeps going on. Okay. And then unfortunately, a year after Ellery died, uh, another friend lost their son in a car accident. And that was in 2016. And that was... Um, December and Sean Orpen's son Tyler and then in 2017 um, my friend Bethany her daughter um, fought a, a great you know a long fight um, with cancer and she died in uh, 2017 so um, we put our, our heads together and we're like we want to do something because you want to carry your kids legacies on and stuff and we couldn't think of anything that would be better than a park and right before my daughter died, we were going to put up a fairy garden in our um, backyard. Um, and then she passed, and I know Bethany's uh, daughter, they were putting up a fairy garden. So we're like, well, that's where the fairy-themed idea. So we came up with a park, and what this park is going to be is a life-size um, fairy-themed park here. So this is actual... This is a, a walkthrough of what this park is going to be. Um, the city of Pres Prescott generously um, is letting us use their land, or donated their land for us to put the park on, and then we'll give it back to Prescott. So this will be a community park for everybody. Um, we're just paying for the equipment, doing all the fundraising and everything for this park. So this is virtually what this park is going to look like. This is a rendering of it. Um, so. Do you guys, what do you think? It's, it's kind of neat. Are those surfaces like uh, like rubber kind of? Yes. That they have it in River, is it in the Triangles? Don't they have? Yes. Like, yep, tri in, in River Falls. So our biggest thing is, you know, a lot of kids get, you know, especially with those with disabilities, they get stuck on the sidelines when it comes to play because there's not surfaces that they can wheel around in or, you know. So this is a... Um, and, and accessible to all park. So wheelchairs, anybody with disabilities will be able to utilize this park. So that's huge. And through some of the research that we did, there was only like 20 um, accessible parks in the state of Wisconsin that were like this. So we're gonna have one right in our community and this is gonna be located right behind um, 
the fireworks place on Pearl and Canton Street. There's St. Croix Bluffs Park that exists there now. So um, basically, um, we're in the fundraising stage right now. Um, since we opened our nonprofit, so we're a legitimate nonprofit called Healing Play Inc. in 2018, and uh, October, and we've raised um, probably a little over 125, 130,000 um, already in that period of time. And now we have stuff like this that we can go and show because a lot of people didn't quite understand what a fairy garden was. So looking at this, so there's several opportunities that. Um, the community or anybody could help us. We have several fundraising op opportunities, sponsorship opportunities, and things like that. What I hope Prescott realizes is we're going to bring so much to the community. I've been a stay-at-home mom since my youngest, who is, or since my oldest, who is now 14, and we would go all over the place to go to the parks. I go all the way to Bloomington. We go Stillwater everywhere just to go to a park. So you get a lot of people. Um, especially moms and things like that. They'll come to the community, they're going to eat at your places and things like that, but they're going to come to see a park like this because there's nothing like this around there, I can assure you that. Okay. Um, so a couple different ways that we are raising funds. Um, if you go to our website, it's um, uh, fairywonderlandpark.org, um, and I'll scroll down here so you can see. These are just some pictures. So that's kind of what the park looks like. If you've ever been to the park, there is kind of like a little track around it. Um, so this is to scale. The city's going to, we're, we're trying to keep it on, on the back side so that we um, open up some free space for cars to drive. Because if you've ever been in that development, there's probably, I don't know, 100 or more children back there. And they're always running. So we're going to try to keep it so it's, it's safe. Um, and the city will hopefully get some grants to put bathrooms in, and they're hoping to put in a parking lot as well. Um, when so they now, so just for scale, is that kind of like where the soccer field is now? Yeah, the soccer field is, is now. So if, if you've been back there, this is right here. I guess I could have used the mouse. <laughs> but this is the, the basketball court right there. So it's okay. exactly to scale. He drew it to scale. So that's how big it is. And it can get bigger. As we raise more funds, it can get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, to fill that whole area, which I think would be really cool. And then in the future, if we keep raising funds and stuff, I would really like to see sports courts and pickleball and things like that, because the city had bought that, oh, there's a whole nother lot back there that's open that the city bought too. And I think for the community to have stuff like that for, um, you know, pickleball is a big thing right now. Um, and sport, you know, just a place, a gathering place. So it's, it'll be just a nice community area. Um, for everybody. Um, we have the different locations. There's different pods and stuff. So there's opportunities to, to sponsor um, different pieces of equipment, larger things, cash donations, whatever you want. Um, and I'm going to show you that before I show you the, the next thing here. Sorry, I'm not used to the mouse. Okay. So if you click on sponsor, we have four different ways that we can sponsor right now. Oops. Okay. Um, we have a trivia night event, and that's been our largest fundraising event that we have. We have actually have it here at Patak's. Hi. Yeah, you got it. All right. I'm used to this, so don't mind me. Um, so we have a, a trivia night, and that's May 2nd. Um, basically, you can get, gather a table together, and we play trivia, and it's a really, really fun time. You can gather your team. You can either you can sponsor the event too. So we have oh, we we have um, we have platinum, gold, um, and silver sponsors for that. So businesses have the opportunity, and I can pass this around if you want to see this, or I can have Kim do it. Um, there's two different things here to see. So if you're a business and you want to sponsor that, um, I'm passing around the, the brochure. If you want to do silent auctions or anything like that, we'd be happy. And this is specifically sponsoring of the Trivia Night event. OK? Um, and I'll show you who we have right now. If you're a sponsor, um, our Trivia Night sponsors so far, we have a few here. Uh, Platinum, which is a thousand dollars. Oops, sponsor for. The, sorry, this is different. 
Um, you get recognized the day of, of the event. Um, you'll get, you know, this is clickable. We'll share you on our Facebook page. Um, and then we have our gold sponsors. Um, and that the platinum sponsors includes a table, so you can bring, you can have a great community um, uh, or a business, whatever they call it. Uh, <coughs> give me the word. Get together and bring all your, you know, eight of your um, employees and have a night out. Um, with our gold sponsorship, we have a couple of tickets are included with that, and then we have silver sponsorships. And I still have to get a few up here and stuff. I know Wisconsin Credit Union is a silver sponsor as well. Thank you. So thank you very much. Um, so these are, you can check that out. That's a way to sponsor help, help with the park. Um, then we also have equipment sponsors. So we have different pieces of equipment that can be purchased. And I know Tara just went to the bathroom, but there's other Wisconsin people here. Um, we got our first uh, gold park sponsor, and that's Wisconsin Credit Union. I want to thank you guys so much. It means just a ton. Um, and they are sponsoring, where is it? The Tickly Toll Bridge. Troll, Toll Tickly Toll Troll Bridge? Tickly Toll Bridge? I don't know. <laughs> so they are sponsoring that, and we're so excited about that. You can check. Um, so these are the pieces of, of equipment, but um, that was beyond exciting. I, I can't even. Um, I've been working with Tara for a few weeks, and she was right on board with that. So this is our picture. Um, we took, so. Group of, group of people that are working with us to raise funds and go out and, and do everything. Um, so this is, and you can go through and read. If there's a little bit of an interview and stuff, it's pretty special. So um, go around and search our, our website. So here she comes out now. But yeah, she, she, she did a lot for that, so. You missed it. I was just thanking you. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for taking her. Good thing your boss is here. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we appreciate it. So thanks, uh, Wisconsin Credit Union. All right. So there's those those different ways to sponsor our park or, or give funds, or we just have the um, cash. If anyone wants to give a cash donation to the park, all, all money goes towards the park, building of the park. And we're hoping to have, I mean, our goal is to have something done um, in the summer of 2021, um, but that all depends on how it's going. Yeah. I'm interested in my politics, if I did. What is the Yes. Okay, so that's a good question. The total cost of this park is, is $1.5 million. Yep. So um, it's with the rubberized and everything is ex it's custom, so it's cement. Um, we partner with a uh, equipment manufacturer, if you call it equipment, I mean it's just play structures in, um, is it Golden Valley? It's called Create Play. They are worldwide, um, known worldwide, and they do custom, they, they create like stories, and that's kind of what our park is, it's like a story, so it's just unique. Everything's like, it's hand carved and made and it's, I can't wait till people see it. So it's kind of like uh, Triangles Park, made, it's a different company, or um, Teddy Bear, if anyone's been to Teddy Bear Park in Stillwater, that is a create play um, structures there. So it's super unique. Um, and here's what I want to show you too. Another way is um, we have fairies. Now this is, I was thinking, when we kind of came up with this idea, we have these, these fairies that you can personally buy to honor a loved one, they can be living or past. Now when I was thinking about this idea, you know, I, this might sound crazy, but when I was, I was purchasing a headstone for my daughter, you know, whoever wants to do that, 
you want to make sure that the picture was on there, right? Because everyone that passes by, they can see who she was, right? So when I was thinking of these fairies, I'm like, this is something that's so unique that people, whether, you know, you can honor somebody, and it's like a little community of fairies, um, so you can honor your loved ones okay, through these fairies. So I found, um, I found some people in Canada that can draw up fairies kind of in the likeness of your, your loved ones, okay? So you can purchase a fairy for $500, and then you work with me so far until we grow and you need somebody else to work with, but, um, and then we create a fairy in the likeness, and they all live in these little places. So is if you go up here, this is called our Dreamcatcher Cove, and this is where the first fairies live. And all the proceeds, again, go to building the park. But Dreamcatcher Cove, you'll see this, and it looks like one of the pieces of equipment that will be at the actual park. And when you go to the park, you can use a QR code, you can scan it, and these fairies will pop up that live there. So, so far, if you click on Dreamcatcher Cove, we have some fairies that live there. And, of course, Ellery lives there. So she had curly hair and, you know, um, so you can click on the fairies, and this is what you get. So you get a, draw, a drawing of your loved one, um, and then you get a story. So I can, you know, if you click on here, you can read the stories. And then you can get some video. You have a couple video, and then you get some pictures, okay? And again, this, this can be, you can buy it for, um, somebody's buying some for their grandkids, um, you know, just to honor their grandkids, and maybe they'll write up a story and stuff. So this is a way um, for other people that, because this can get further than just the Prescott area too, that even if you don't go into the, the park, you can have a piece of the park, but more importantly, your, your, you know, your child or your loved one's legacy will always live on here. So, but that is, that is essentially what Fairy Wonderland is. It's a whimsical place that's going to bring joy, lots of love, lots of laughs to people for years to come, and we're happy to bring it to Prescott. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yeah. So how will the park be, um, how will you manage that? I mean, the city, it, it's, it, it'll go to the city's property and then... Um, yep. As far as it being sustainable and upgrading and yep. maintenance and, and making sure that everything is, is good on that. Yep, and oh, that's huge. What's the plans on that? Yeah, that's hugely important to us. Um, so we are going to, we'll donate it back to 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 Prescott, and they will, um, they'll maintain it by mowing and stuff like that and the standard stuff, but when it comes to equipment, <coughs> we'll have um, money in our fund that will make sure that the equipment's always up, you know, in good good standing and stuff. We have a contract um, with our lawyer that we've uh, written up, um, and we're working on the fine print of that. But um, that's hugely important to us is that the park is always maintained. Um, sometimes that's just not the case. Um, so we will have you know the funds to make sure that the equipment is kept up to standards and, and everything. So. And I assume there'll, there'll be several years before there would be real maintenance to it, right? Yeah, and most of the stuff, like um, when we talk to the, the the designer, I mean, it's a whole interesting story about. But he he said it's um, drunk college student baseball bat proof. You know what I mean? So this is this is like heavy duty. These pieces of equipment are um, concrete. You know, so there's not going to be a lot of you know, things that could go wrong with them. There are a few pieces like on swings and different things like that, but there's not a lot of moving parts that need to be concerned about. Um, yeah, we'd love, to, we'd love to get different sponsors to, um, it'd be nice to have solar lighting in them so they lit up, like fairy houses light up, um, different things like that. I mean, there's a lot of, and, and our wishing well that we have in here, um, we want to have it so that it's going to be a real working wishing well where you can throw the coins in and stuff. And we'd like to have the, the noise in it so it sounds like it's dropping forever, you know. Um, so there's things like that that we're working on too. So, any other questions? 
Yeah. So if you, I mean, if if you know of anybody that or your business would like to sponsor a piece of equipment, cash donations, you know, or sponsor trivia night, that's coming up on May second. Um, you know, uh, we'd be happy. Just, I believe my email's on the back bottom of them, the Fairy Wonderland email. Um, or just contact me if you're interested in anything or if you know of anybody that might want to sponsor something like this or um, yeah or if you're interested in a ferry or anything like that um, I'd ha be happy to work with with anybody and show you how it works and stuff we're at the beginning stages of some of that stuff so we're going through the tweaks and everything but um, it's gonna be pretty cool um, and you know and there's not a lot around here like that so and did you say there's an anticipated opening date well so? we're hoping like our goal is um in the summer of 2021 you know but that's mm -hmm. coming close on a year and we do have lots of funds to raise by then mm -hmm. um you know and we we're debating whether we want to put it in as mm -hmm. in sections um it's going to be obviously cheaper if we do it all at once mm -hmm. um but we'll see you know where we stand at that time but so the computer Excuse me, the completed project all done at once was about a million and a half. Yeah. And, and you know, the, we don't know what the market, the economy is doing right now. You know, it could be cheaper than that. It could be more, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's probably on the higher side, you know, if we get some more um, people to help us out with that, that'll take costs down, you know, if we have community builds, volunteers, different things like that, you know. So we're estimating. And then the, the you know, if we raise more than that, we'll just keep adding on to the park, but we do need to have a fund for maintenance of the park. So, but yeah. 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 So like people could, you know, it would be neat, like even a theater or anybody that wanted to do this whole pot area, you know, um, they could, that whole area right there. I mean, that's selfie stations and, you know, I mean, and we'll be recognizing you at the park. We'll be recognizing you at, on the website and things like that. So it's it's unique. Yeah. It's a beautiful park and you're right, we have nothing like that and children will love it. Yeah. Um, and their adult parents and grandparents yeah. too would love it. Um, I'm, I'm looking at uh, such a colorful uh, uh, park and I'm wondering if the color is it right in the concrete, or will it have to be painted from time to time, or is it the color put right into the concrete? Do you know how that's done? I'm not technically? sure. I'm not sure how they do it. Because um, it would require more upkeep up because it has to be painted. There's so much color in it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I mean, I could ask him about that, but I don't think it would be a painted. It might fade a bit over time, but it'll never. It is in the concrete. Yeah, I mean, it's the color that we're seeing is like a rubber surface. Right? The ground is rubber. Yep. Yep. The ground is rubber. I mean, and then everything else is just I suppose painted. Like, there's a lot of color in the mushrooms and the. Yep. They all throughout the the, the uh, park itself, the things you play on. And, yeah. Uh, and it looks like there's also plantings and things that. And that's what. Right, and, and that's something that we would like to get the community involved in. I mean, there's if, if anyone, we don't have to do all that and put that in there, and it's beautiful, but we'll, that obviously will need maintenance. And we would like, you know, to have a sprinkler system and different things like that um, to keep all that stuff lush, but um, if we don't have that right away, we don't have that right away. Um, but we would like to have a miniature fairy garden in there too within the large fairy garden. This is just kind of like if you go through the names of everything, it's kind of like you're like the little fairy running around like the kids are, like a big, like they're the fairies here. So, yeah, and it's, I can't say how much, I think it'll do a lot for the community and it'll be a beautiful thing. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah.